Support for Entrepreneurs Enigma and the shows in the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Active Campaign. If you're looking for a way to grow your business, you need to check out Active Campaign. It's a powerful marketing automation platform that can help you increase your sales, improve your customer service, and build stronger relationships with your customers. With Active Campaign, you can create and send email campaigns, manage your leads and customers, create landing pages, set up automated workflows, and track results. All on one approachable platform. Active Campaign has more than 10,000 five star reviews of G2 from happy users. Preview Me is one. They're a B2B software company that uses Active Campaign to send their prospective customers highly visual and personalized emails as they progress through the CRM stages, such as completing a demo. This has increased their click through rate 96%. If you're serious about growing your business, you've got to check out Active Campaign. Try it today for free and see how it can help you achieve your goals. Now, for a limited time, Active Campaign is offering you, the listeners of Entrepreneurs Enigma, a chance to double your contacts for free when you sign up at activecampaign.com slash activate. That means if your email list is 10,000 contacts, you only need to pay for 5,000. Or you can pay for 10,000 and get an extra 10,000 totally free. Personalize your customer experience. Do it with automation. Like the 185,000 businesses that have an active campaign. Go to activecampaign.com slash activate to sign up today. Activecampaign.com slash activate. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs. How we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneur's Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I'm, as always, Seth. And I am here with a buddy of mine, Taylor May. He is the epitome of doing it, the entrepreneurial journey as a side hustle, at least for right now. He might you know, spring something on me and say, well, it's not a side hustle anymore. No, but like as of right now, as of what I know, it's a side hustle. But he's made a lot of his side hustle. I don't know where, when this guy sleeps. And he also has a baby on the way. So by the time this podcast comes out, he'll have been a few months into the daddyhood and even more tired than he is now. But Taylor, welcome to the show. How's it going, buddy? Seth, my man, appreciate the uh, the invite, the opportunity. And yeah, you're right. I'm gonna have probably zero sleep here pretty soon with the baby May shortly on the way. So baby def- May, I definitely appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Exactly. Yeah, got in before the baby pops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You'd be like, I'm too tired, dude. I'm too tired. I'm yeah, too tired. Good, good timing here. So good, very good timing. So. Taylor and I met back when I was doing work for Zero Eyes, which is a gun detection AI video surveillance platform um, run by a bunch of Navy SEALs. And then I went my way. He went his way. He's not Record, Record, Ranker. Yeah, Record. Record. I was never anywhere close with that. You're but good. Record. Everyone says Record, so you're good. Record, re- yeah. Record, which is, which is physical security. So he's still in that vertical, and that's kind of what he knows. And it kind of, kind of goes into what he does for his side hustle as well because he, he found his niche, which is kind of one of the big things people say is find your niche. They find your niche and go for it. Um, you also, a lot of people don't know that you can actually do this at a big school, but you are also a walk-on at OSU, Oklahoma State University. And not only that, you were on the winning team that year. <laughs> So it's like, I and what we'll attribute to the fact that Taylor was on the team. Yeah, 2011 Oklahoma State. So I walked on at OSU. I was a defensive end. Walked man. on. Yeah. So it was Division One football, man. It's, it's a full time job. I'm, I'm just kind of jealous now, Seth, that these college athletes they get paid now. Back when I played, I didn't get paid. You know. Yeah. So. And you walked on, meaning that you really didn't get paid. Oh, 100 percent, dude. Paved my own way. So paved your own. But you know why? I mean, you did what you you had fun. You lived it. You know. Probably kept you out of somewhat of trouble, I guess, at big school. Eh. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, was, I went to Delaware, and I mean, the football players always still managed to get into in the trouble. We all did. But they broke things in the dorm. I don't know how they did it. But they yeah, broke. Gundy's rule at OSU is like you had three strikes. So it's like, you know, you mess up once or twice. It's like a slap on the wrist. But that third time you mess up, it's adios. You know, you're out the, out the team. Well, that's, and that's, I mean, the coaches, they don't, people don't realize that, they, that coaches are also kind of parents to you guys yeah. these football players are big i mean you're a big dude and i mean 
and they're big, but they're still kids. I mean, they're still very much adolescent kids. Especially, did you walk on freshman year? I did. Yeah, yep. so you were very much a still teenager. Oh, you 18, were still 18-year-old freaking... kid coming in there, you know, Oh, summer. yeah, so you, you were completely a knucklehead at that point. You know, oh, you don't get rid of, and honestly, you don't get rid of knuckleheadness until you're 25 when the frontal lobe actually fully develops. On some of us, I still think mine's missing, but whatever. Yeah, uh, just ask my wife. She'll tell you. So, <laughs> so you're, you've been in the security business pretty much since you got out of college, right? Like, you know, physical security and stuff like that. So what is physical security? Like, what is your niche, especially? Yeah, so I mean, I started this right out of probably 21, 22. I'm I'm 30 now, so just close to 10 years now in the uh, the industry. But I really got into this industry from my dad. My dad's been in the industry for you know 20 or so years, mainly on the ac- access control side. So you know, door hardware, yeah. key fobs, all, all the all the nine, all the fun uh, stuff, yeah, <laughs> all the fun stuff, right? But then I found a niche on the video surveillance, emerging technology side, so AI, computer vision, you know, etc. And that's kind of been where I've been. My sweet set's been, and it's been in that space, and. I've sold everything from facial recognition to obviously weapon detection at zero eyes to now kind of roadway intelligence technology at record. That's really wild what you guys are doing at record too. Like, yeah, literally at events. You always wonder how the heck they pull off a Taylor Swift event, you know, or something <laughs> like that. There's got to be something around there doing something, and you know, you guys are doing stuff. I mean, mean that for Taylor Swift concerts, but like at stadiums and stuff, which is kind of neat. Yeah, entertainment, casinos, retailers, DOTs. I mean, it's just all software-based technology, right, that works on, you know, existing camera infrastructure. So there's a lot of things that I've done, just mainly in that SaaS kind of software model, um, in addition to, obviously, my own company, you know, Security VIP. So Yeah, and then Security VIP started out with a very loud intro. I can tell you that much. (laughs) Every time I went on, I have have to fast forward because it was was always like... And then I'm sure that was very pleasant for everyone listening, my rendition of that, you know. But um, but then you did a podcast for it was started out as a podcast, and then it's morphing, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's, I started it back in May of 2020. Started out as a podcast series, so I yeah. didn't have the, I didn't have this mic. I bought a hundred dollar mic off Amazon in my garage. Hey, it does work. Yeah, it, it worked. Work, you know, yeah. and I I wanted to just. It was back when COVID started, right? So nothing was what going on. What the hell are you going to do with yourself? Exactly. Yeah. So I created Security VIP to you know, bring awareness to the industry around technologies, challenges, what's working, what's not during COVID. Obviously, yeah. educate me more in the industry, get me more involved with people. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done that. I've done that now. The podcast still lives. I haven't done a lot of episodes recently, but you know, Security VIP now has really evolved into a consumer network. Um, I love it. The yeah. last three and a half years, man, I've, I've realized that in this industry that. You've got manufacturers who create products. You've got integrators or value-added resellers that distribute those products. And then you have the end consumer, the end user that just wants to make, make sure the product works in their environment. <laughs> this was the damn thing to work. Yeah. Right? And what I found with Security VIP is these end consumers, they just want a direct relationship with those solutions providers, those manufacturers. You know, mm, yeah. And I've created this community now, Security VIP, where if you're a retailer, a casino, a education, whatever vertical you may fall in, they just want to hear from other consumers on what they're doing around these challenges that you see mm-hmm. happening. So that's kind of what this community now has been built into Security VIP. And I've built this advisory board of consumers who network that's with awesome. each other. Um, and then, you know, we, you and I were talking about it earlier before we kicked off is I've got this app now that I've been yeah. working on, you know, last so seven, it will months. be out. It will be out by the time this podcast comes out. It will be out and people can download it. Yep. Both yeah. Apple I mean, and Android, which is good for you for doing both. You know, that's brave. Yeah, so Google Play, Apple App Store, both on platforms, uh, it will be launched, but it's strictly for consumers, strictly for end users in variety of verticals to network, cross communicate, share best practices, kind of can kind of just be those that that voice in the industry versus that. getting that cold call or sales pitch from a vendor, right? I just want to yeah. create that exclusive kind of experience for those consumers. And try not to alienate the vendors, but you know, kind of alienate the vendors. You know? <laughs> yeah, to do to the best of my ability. They just want to be able to have a safe space essentially right to, to exactly, kind of communicate because, yeah and that and not be pitched all the time not like linkedin yeah, i get pitched like three or four times a day uh, i think i saw one of your posts last week you were oh, talking I, about, I, I about bitch that. and moan constantly about this stuff <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show as a person with a very deep voice i'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns but a deep voice doesn't sell b2b and advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell b2b either That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. 
That's right. Over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about wigs. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. It's that, those kind of pitches and it's just daily like, hey, Taylor, we have to, we've got this new sales tool, sales lead gen tool. I'm just like, you know how many people reach out to me for that sales lead tool? It's just like flooded with my inbox on LinkedIn. So I'm just like, <laughs> you know, or, or they turn and connect and I'm like, if I don't know you or have some kind of relationship, I generally don't connect. It just right. is what it is. So, yeah. 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 So security VIP is your side hustle. What, how's it been? I mean, now that COVID is an endemic, not a pandemic. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Let's just be honest. It's here. It's going to be like the common flu. People are going to walk around with COVID and not even know it. And that's, well, that's either near, here nor there. But like, what's it been like transitioning from, well, you're at home. No one's really, I mean, you're still probably at home working remotely, but like, it's different now than it was in 2020. And what's it like having a side hustle and a full hustle and all that? Like, cause you know, you're, you're one of these people that I haven't, don't have a lot of, you, you know, this perspective of I'm still doing it, at, but I'm doing an active side hustle. Yeah. Well, I mean, I definitely graduated from my garage, you know, into an actual yeah office so that's a start right now uh i think uh when you start a podcast at least when i started back in 2020 it's like how do i generate revenue you know how do i generate <laughs> uh, yeah. income to actually make maybe do this full time and a lot of it was just endorsements from people i knew it was sponsorships and pe- getting mm-hmm. people's brands on my, my podcast which helped but then i was yeah. like you know if i still want to do the podcast and still want to make it a full-time business and you know really engage this side hustle further i've got to do something more and yeah. that's where I feel like I'm at now. And it took three years for me to figure that out. But I feel like I'm at this point now where if I can make this app that I've, I'm releasing, which is called VIP Connect, just for everyone listening, um, once this is officially live and I'm able to build a substantial consumer community, there might be a point, at least in my career, and I hope that I will be able to do my side hustle full time. Yeah. Um, in addition it's to the podcast. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I think what I always tell people is like, yes, I work full time for my employer right now, Recore, and my, my own business, Security VIP, is my side hustle slash passion. And I've just found a lot of passion doing my own thing with Security VIP. But I feel like I'm now at that point where I can really turn this into a full time gig um, around things that I want to do, you know, build your own brand, you know, mm-hmm. create your own worth, et cetera. And, uh, and have but time it, for family, too, which is 100%. Cause, you know, you, because you're gonna you're gonna find that you can need time for family because yeah. it's, it's gonna be exhausting yeah but i think I, I love what you're doing seth on this podcast because you said it earlier i walk on oklahoma state and when you're a walk on it's like you're on an island from day one you know yeah. you're isolated you didn't get recruited by the coaches so you got to like prove your word to the team you got to connect with the other guys uh in your unit yeah, network yeah yeah ex- essentially it's, and so i've kind of transitioned that mentality into the security industry and said hey look you know i'm, I'm you know 21 22 years old yeah my dad's got experience in the industry but i want to pave taylor may's path in the industry and how can i do that so yeah. and that's kind of what as you know security vip has all been about it's just networking it's it's transparent mm-hmm. it's accountability that's why you it's heard exactly that like media not goals yeah. that's what goals media is at the end but you know it, uh, entrepreneurs enigma is a way for me to get in front of people have an excuse to talk to people. Right. And then and some of it, sometimes it turns into business for Goldstein Media. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's just good connections, friendships. And later down the road, I can say, hey, Taylor, I got something for you. Or, hey, Taylor, I have an idea for something. You know, let's talk about this. It's opening my network. And yeah. I like that. And I think that's what you're doing too, which I really like. And it's kind of the same kind of mentality kind of thing. So. Yeah, I'm just, I'm very honest. I'm very transparent, but I'm also accountable. And it's just kind of what the industry, I think, lacks of is there's, yeah. you know, products and solutions that are great, but they're not transparent. They're not accountable. You can say you're 100% perfect in something, but are you really 100% perfect? Or where, no, where, they, where no the way. gaps, where's the vulnerabilities? And a lot of people don't mm-hmm. admit those vulnerabilities, right? So that's the one thing that at least consumers in the physical or just broader technology industry want to have yeah. that awareness to, right? They want to understand Absolutely. those gaps. So, absolutely. So, what is the best thing about, I guess, doing 
the hustle and the mate and the side hustle at the same time. What do you like about being an entrepreneur on the side per se, and eventually becoming a full-time entrepreneur? But what, like, what gets you up in the morning makes you smile? I think one thing it helps that I'm, I work remotely, right? So that obviously yeah. helps, but two, it's just, I've got some weird passion, man, that just connecting people to other people. And I've identified a gap in the security industry that I think is a game changer for our industry to really create a community and environment for those consumers. So that's really what drives me every single morning is how yeah. can I continue that movement? How can I continue that platform, mm -hmm. build that environment where if, if Seth is a VP of security at a casino, how can I put him in touch with other VP of securities and casinos or a different vertical that Seth may be able to get awareness from or for Seth to share his content and experience with, yeah. you know, how can I love it? How can I engage that more? That's really what drives me um, all hours of the day. And, you know, yeah. I keep my, my wife up at night because I'm just here talking and spending ideas with her and she keeps me, you know, at ground zero. But uh, yeah, honey, not yet. Not yet yeah. Not so yet. she's, you know, God love her. She deals with all my security talk. But uh, I mean, that's just a passion of mine, man, that I've, I've been able yeah. to I'm identify, you know, here in the industry. So then what keeps you up at night? I mean, what, what, what's the scariest thing right now? Especially, I mean, you have a baby on the way, you know, full-time jobs, major, major side hustle here. So, you know, yeah. what keeps you up at night? Well, pretty soon baby may will keep me up at night, but, oh, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you have no I, idea. You know, it's, uh, it's a good question. Um, I think failure always keeps me up. Um, or, Doing something, putting your 110 percent effort in, and it still doesn't succeed, and you don't get yeah. that reassurance from what you've built. I think just I want to say self worth or self satisfaction. I can't even talk. Satisfaction yeah. can uh can be a driving force, but I think it's just it's. it's like, am I doing enough? Yeah. Am I creating something that is worth to worth valuable to consumer? What is their feedback? So I think that's what I've. I'm most afraid of is just be able to be putting so much time and energy and investment into this this community and this environment and mm -hmm. hopefully getting that reciprocant value back from those consumers say hey Taylor we really appreciate what you're doing um I love it yeah so that's probably what keeps me up most at night is the the sense of uh not exceeding those expectations that the consumer might have absolutely and what and so what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time Oh man, um, I love this question. It's just staying true to myself, you know. I don't, I don't try to be someone else that I'm not <clears throat> on social media because I think sometimes LinkedIn, you know, some people try to be something that they're not. Or, yeah. But you know, one of the founding principles of a security VIP is always putting people before product, but also doing, uh, exhibiting those actions through transparency and accountability. Yeah. Um, I think too many times we don't see transparent conversations. We don't see those conversations where, hey, we admit something, but um, something goes wrong. We're not accountable for those actions. So that's what I've been trying to push a lot just with my own company, but with by who I am individually is putting those conversations at the forefront saying, hey, look, I'm very honest and open with you. This is where we lack mm -hmm. in experience or we lack in development, whatever it may be, but I'm going to be accountable and I want to build a relationship and friendship with you first before I try to pitch a product or sell a mm -hmm. solution or anything. Because at the end of the day, do it I, the right way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Seth, I've had, I've had clients now for uh, literally as long as I've been in the industry. I've, I've sold the same client and these are multiple clients. Isn't it funny how that happens? Like four, four or five different solutions, the same client. But, but the reason why is because they know I'm not, you know, bullshitting them. You know, I guess yeah. I come in and say, Hey, look, look, this is what we do. This is where we're good at. This is where we suck. You, you, I don't care if you don't buy anything from me. I just want you to get your feedback on the technology. And if it's a fit, it's a fit. If it's not cool, let me know exactly. how I can work on it. So that's just kind of how it's been now through transparency and accountability. Right. So. Absolutely. And that's how it needs to be. I've done, websites i'm one of my clients i've done his website five times it's insane i've known him for 15 years and you think about a website gets revamped every five or should every five he's been like every three but still you, you do it three or four times because you updated new technologies and stuff like that you change it to a different kind of technology You're like hey joe i'm now over here now this might actually be good for xyz where x y abc was good for over there so you're yeah. not you're not poaching from the other company, but you're saying now I can help you over here. Let's chat. You know that kind of thing. It's kind of neat. It's the rapport, man. I, you you mm -hmm. built obviously your business off Seth Gold uh, Seth Goldstein and selling yourself, and I you know I sell myself too. And just you know, again it's at the end of the day, it's just it's rapport, it's friendships, it's relationships. You know that's Absolutely. what that's what wins the day.
So in the end, where can people find you online? Where's your major warding hall? Let me guess, LinkedIn? <laughs> LinkedIn is number one. So yeah. you can find, obviously, my profile on LinkedIn. You can find Security VIP Enterprises on LinkedIn. I just created a page for VIP Connect Ooh. on LinkedIn. And then I've got a website, so securityvipenterprises.com. Very cool. So this has been great, Taylor. I'm glad we got to chat. I'm glad to get you on. And you know, we'll see everyone next time. Awesome. Thank you, Seth. Appreciate it, man. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net. Goldstein Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you are listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Izzy House hosts a great podcast called the Space Marketing Podcast. Izzy, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Space Marketing Podcast is where we explore marketing principles, strategies, and tactics through the lens of space. I talk space with some very interesting industry professionals about their challenges and successes with marketing in the new commercial space economy. This show is for business leadership, entrepreneurs, and the space curious. Wow. And where in the universe can people subscribe? All of the major channels. And you can also find it on MPN and spacemarketingpodcast.com. You heard her. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.